Hello everyone, welcome to section 4, post exploitation with Metasploit. So before we get started with this section, let's go through what we'll be looking at in this section. So starting off, we will be looking at the different interpreter commands that can be used to fully utilize the new found power that we have after exploiting our target. All right, so once we get up to scratch with the different interpreter commands, we'll be then looking at how to dump the different password hashes on different operating systems, more specifically on Android, given the fact that our target was Android, where we did get a reverse interpreter session. All right, so we'll be looking at how to dump the password hashes and finally decoding them with various decryption algorithms. All right, we'll then be looking at privilege escalation, which will involve us spawning a shell with the interpreter, giving us the different administrative privileges that one would have or are necessary to have to perform uh, even more functions on the target after exploitation. In this video, we're going to be looking at post exploitation with interpreter or with Metasploit. All right, so in the previous videos, when we looked at exploiting Android, for example, we got a interpreter prompt and essentially after performing the exploitation, we then can perform additional functions on the device after we have exploited it. So this is what this section is going to be focusing on, the types of commands and functions that you can do to or on your target to get more information on your target to furthermore exploit it and obviously to gather more information from the device, whatever device that may be. Now in this uh, video, we're going to be looking at some of the basic commands that will hopefully give you all that you need to use Metaprinter for post exploitation. All right, later on in this section, we'll be looking at getting the password hashes. And then finally, we'll be looking at privilege escalation, which is, as it says, escalating your privileges in the system. So I currently have a Metaprinter session opened here, and this is from exploiting one of my Android devices, similar to the one that we looked at in the previous section when we exploited my Android device. So this is very similar. So we have a interpreter session opened and uh, let's get started with the basic command. So the most basic of commands and the most important one is the help command. All right, so the help command will display all the documentation in regards to all the commands that you can run with the interpreter. All right, so for example, you have your core commands which deal with Metasploit and the interpreter. This is an advanced section that we'll be looking at later, but for now, Let's look at the file system commands, all right? So the file system commands allow us to navigate around the file system to make changes to the file system, rename files, copy files, make new directories, print our working directories, etc. You can also search for files, upload and download files to and from the exploited device. All right, so that's very, very awesome, and especially the fact that you can download and upload files to and from the device. You then have your networking commands, also something that's very important. Now, of course, a interpreter session can be for any type of platform or operating system. It could be Mac OS X, it could be Windows, it could be Linux. So these commands will work really with any operating system. Okay, so you then have your networking commands. You have your ifconfig if you're running Linux, this will display the network interfaces. You then have your ipconfig, which will display your networking interfaces if you're running a Windows-based operating system. You then have your system commands, which allow you to execute commands. You can get the user ID. You can look at the local time on the device. You can filter the processes. So if you're searching for a process in which you want to migrate into, you can list the running processes, which is always awesome. It gives you idea of what exactly is running on the device. And then you have your shell, which will give you a system shell or a command prompt, depending on the operating system. In this case, we, are, we have exploited an Android device, so it will give us a shell. If I had exploited a Windows operating system, it would have given me a command prompt and finally, we have your sysinfo, which we looked at in the previous video, which will give you information in regards to the target, such as the operating system it is running. You then have your user interface command, which allows you to grab a screenshot of the desktop environment if you're running Windows or Linux, for example. You then have your webcam commands, which allow you to record the microphone to start a video chat, which essentially means to prompt video communication. You have your webcam list, which will display the a list of the connected webcams, if any. And finally, you have your webcam snap and stream to either take a snapshot or to play a video from the webcam. All right, you then have your audio output, which will essentially allow you to play an audio file on the target system. So this is a great way of, for example, playing a prank on one of your friends. And of course, I don't encourage it, but playing a simple sound file on your target's device can really be quite scary. All right. And then finally, you have your Android based commands. Now, this is the only operating system that has its own list of commands that perform very specific functions. So for example, you can start an Android activity. Now this is a very advanced feature. 
But some of my favorites are the fact that you can check if the device is rooted. You can also dump the call log and the contacts, which is very powerful. And I'm sure you understand how powerful this is. You can essentially steal contacts from a device. And of course, I'm not condoning this. This video is strictly for educational purposes. You can also dump the SMSs. You can geolocate the device. You can also send an SMS to any type of phone number. Of course, a valid phone number. You can set the audio mode to either mute the device, to set it to vibrate, etc. And finally, you can enable or disable wake lock and you can geolocate the device using the WLAN information or Wi-Fi information. All right, so that's the list of all the commands that you can find in the help menu. Now, of course, I want to explain some of the more important commands, not necessarily demonstrate them, but explain to you what they do. So the first important command that you really need to know is the background command, all right? So the background command will essentially take this meta-interpreter session in the background. Now, you might be asking, why do we need this? Well, the background command allows us to essentially minimize this meta-interpreter session so that we can perform another exploit on the device. So it's good for minimizing your meta-interpreter sessions or your exploit sessions so that you can perform other functions using Metasploit. So you can see how important this is. Now, I'm not going to do it because I want to show you a few other commands with the meta-interpreter. All right, you then have the user ID. The user ID command will display the user ID and will display more information about the device in regards to the user ID. You then have the machine ID, which applies very, very specifically to devices that have a machine ID. So there you are. You have your machine ID, very important information that will allow you to get an understanding of the target that you're dealing with. All right, now let's move on to the networking commands because this is quite important as you probably would have guessed. So you have your IP config, which will not necessarily work, but if it does work, it should display all the interfaces that are connected to the device. So for example, these are all the network interfaces connected to the device. Now, of course, some of these are virtual adapters set up for different applications, and they all have their different MAC addresses. So for example, if we try and find our adapter or Wi-Fi interface, you can see the local IP given to this interface and the MAC address. So this can give you a good idea of what device is connected to the network, what the MAC address is, the IPv4 address, and the IPv6 address. So again, very, very useful. And you can also use the ifconfig command if the IP config does not work, and it'll display the similar type of information. All right. Now, in the previous video, we looked at the sysinfo command, which essentially displays information about the system. So for example, on this device, it is um, essentially running a Android version 4.4.3. It's an old version of Android, but I use it to test many of my exploits. All right. And now as we move along, let's move on to something a little bit different in the term of file commands. All right. So file commands are very simple. Now, of course, most of them are going to be the same as you would have on Linux. So for example, if I wanted to print my working directory, I would print working directory or PWD, and it'll show me my working directory. Now I can go a step back. And that is done by the change directory command or CD and two full stops. And that will take me a step back. And if I wanted to list the files in this directory, I would just type in LS. All right. So I type in LS and it will list all the files in this directory. So you can see those are the files in this directory. So we have cache, files and library. If you want to go to the original or to the root directory, I would just type in CD. But if that doesn't work, then you can always use the forward slash that will take you home or to the root directory. So let's wait for that to load. And now if we list the files in this directory, you can see it's going to list all the files in the root directory. And then furthermore, you can then access them. So if I was to change my directory into the SD card directory, which is my local directory or the Android device directory, which will display all the files in there. So you can see all my files I have downloads, DCIM, books, backdrop, WhatsApp, you get an idea of what I can do in a folder like WhatsApp. All right, so those are the file commands. Now, of course, there are many, a lot more, so you can upload and download files to and from. So I can say upload, and then I would specify the file directory from this computer. So I'll say from my root and desktop directory, I want you to upload, let's say, a test.txt file. And once I hit enter, it would upload it to this directory on the Android device. Now in the download, you'd essentially specify the directory in which you want to save the download. So root uh, desktop and then you'd specify the file from here that you want to download all right so very very simple and other file commands involve uh, very very simple ones like the cat command the cat will essentially display uh, any contents of a file and you know for example it could be txt file or the shume txt here so if i was to say cat shume txt and i hit enter you can see it's going to display the contents of that file 
all right so those are the file commands now of course we can use the webcam commands but we looked at that in the previous video when we were exploiting android one of the most important ones that i forgot to mention or that i didn't mention is the key scan the key scan essentially allows a key logger functionality so i can hit key scan start but as you can see this won't work on android that's because the functionality cannot be implemented as you know android input is based on touch screens so if you're exploiting a windows or linux operating system using the key scan will essentially start a key logger that will gather all the keyboard strokes and the commands that are being entered this can come in really really handy for gathering passwords and emails that the user might be entering now when you want to get any of this data back we will type in key scan and dump the data so we will dump any of the data that was gathered from the target all right so those are some of the basic and advanced commands and of course there are plenty more but those are self-explanatory i've explained some of the most important ones that deal with moving around and understanding how to navigate with the interpreter on your target device now of course the future videos in this section will be looking at performing advanced operations with the interpreter like getting the password hashes and obviously performing privilege escalation